I've got another lesson for you tonight. And tonight we're going to be talking about Jesus will return. And this is going to kind of set up the next few weeks. We're going to be talking about some different stuff about the returning of Jesus and things we need to do and things we need to watch for. So stay tuned on Wednesday nights so you don't miss any of these. Um, tonight, like I said, we're going to do Jesus will return. And I'm going to read a lot of scriptures tonight, so just bear with me. We'll always break it down so we know what it's saying. Um, but I want to start with promises that Jesus made. So in Matthew chapter 24, verses 42 to 44, it says, Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, if the good men of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore, be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. And I'm going to keep reading and then we'll go back and we'll talk about all this. In Acts chapter 1, verses 10 and 11. It says, And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye here gazing up into heaven? The same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. And then one more for right now in Revelation chapter 22 and we're going to read verse 7 and then we're going to jump and read verse 12 and it says verse 7 says behold i come quickly blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book and then in verse 12 he says and behold i come quickly and my reward is with me to give every man according to his work shall be now I know we read a lot and kind of jumped around a lot, but this is what we're going to talk about. All of those verses are telling us that Jesus is coming back for his church. Those are promises that he made. Everything in his word is true. We know that, right? So if he says he's coming back, he's coming back quickly, he's going to reward those that deserve it. He is going to come back the same way he left, which was up in the clouds. So he's going to come back in the clouds. All those things are all promises that he said that is going to happen. So we know he's coming back. But as the one verse talked about, we don't really know exactly what day or what time of day that he's going to come back. But in the meantime, he wants us to be watching and praying for his return and living a life that's pleasing to him. Because that's the church he's coming back for. He's not coming back for a building. He's coming back for the people that are in that building or the people that are in their homes that have been living the way he asked them to live. A life that's pleasing to Jesus. Those are the people he's coming back for. And he made that promise he will come back for his church. So if you want to be the temple, the body that Jesus lives in, that's who he's coming back for. Your body is now the temple. The church building is just a building. But your body, once Jesus comes to live inside of you, becomes the temple of God. That's his home. Your heart, that's his home. Well, he's coming back for the people that have him in his heart. So when, we don't know. It says we don't know the hour, but it says an hour that we think not. And that kind of leads us to another scripture that I want to read is when the world is going crazy and doesn't have their mind on Jesus, that's when he said, an hour when you think not. So when your mind is totally off of Jesus and you're not focused on any of the things that he wants us to be doing, that's when he said he's coming back. Now, that sounds a lot like what's happening in our world right now. Most people's minds are not on Jesus. And there's some signs that he gave us, and I'm gonna read through these and then we'll explain a few of them. Because I want you to know that right now, all the things that are in here are things that are happening in our world right now. So if we're waiting for some signs and waiting for 
you know, things to like, oh, I know Jesus is coming back when this happens. I know he's coming back when that happens. Well, guess what? All of those things are happening in our world right now. So we know that he's coming back really soon. So let me read you out of 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. This know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such turn away. Now he says this is what our world's going to look like right before he comes back. Now some of those words that you understood, you know that that means Jesus is coming soon because all that kind of stuff is going on in our world right now. We've talked about being thankful. People are not thankful these days. We talked about that a few weeks ago. Uh, we've talked about perilous times. That means things are going to be crazy. Things are going to be going wrong. That sounds just like our world. Um, men shall be lovers of their own selves. So they're going to care about themselves more than they care about other people. Uh, let's see. We talked about disobedient to parents. Hmm. That goes on daily, huh? Yeah. Some of us have a really hard time obeying our parents, don't we? Yes. From time to time, we do. Well, that's another sign of things that are going to happen. Kids that are just running around doing whatever they want and they're not obeying their parents. That's another sign that Jesus is coming back soon. Unthankful. Unholy. Now, we've talked about holy before. Unholy means you're not living a life with the Holy Ghost. You're not living the way Jesus wants you to live. You're not allowing that Holy Ghost to live in your life and be alive in your life. That's that's an unholy life right there. Um, we've talked about without natural affection. That means parents don't love their children like they're supposed to. They abuse them or they do things that hurt the child. They don't know they don't take care of their own kids. We know that's going on in our world. Um False accusers means people are going to lie and, and say things that aren't true. They're going to accuse people of doing stuff they didn't do. Well, that happens every day. Um, and like lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. That's another one that we've talked about. If you love the things of this world and the things that you have here on earth, your possessions, your home, your toys, your games, your, you know, you're loving everything in the world and you put those things above God. That's, that's what that's talking about. Lovers of the pleasure of the world. Lovers of doing things that are wrong. Love You love to do things that are sin. You love to do things that are wrong. You don't think about God. You're thinking about, ooh, that's going to be fun for a while. Let's try that. Let's do this. Let's No, lovers of pleasure. That means satisfying yourself, making yourself happy by doing whatever you want, and you don't love God. That's the kind of stuff that we know is going on in our world right now. And that's the kind of things that he says are going to be happening in the last days. Right before Jesus comes back, those are the things that are going to be happening. And all those things are happening in our world right now. So we don't know when, we don't know the exact hour, the exact time, but we know it's soon based on these scriptures, right? Yeah, we know it's soon. So how can we be ready? We know he's coming. So are we ready or not? Well... We know Acts 2.38, repent, be baptized in Jesus' name, receive the Holy Ghost. We know that. We know 1 Peter 1, 15 and 16, be ye holy, for I am holy, is what God was telling us, right? So we know all those kind of things. But what does being holy or being a Christian really mean? Well, the word Christian means to be Christ-like. So if we want to say, oh, we're a Christian then our life should look like Jesus Christ's life. How he was when he was on this earth and he was walking on this earth and doing miracles and teaching people, that's what our life should look like. If we want to say we're Christian, 
then we have to be Christ-like. So let's think about a few things that is Christ-like. What was Jesus like on this earth? What was his life like? He was faithful. He was kind. He was merciful. That means he was, you know, helping people who didn't really deserve it. Remember we talked about mercy and grace? Yeah, he was merciful. He was helping people that really didn't deserve for him to help them, right? Which, I mean, none of us really do, but I mean, there's people that were doing him wrong and he still did right by them. So he was thankful. He was a loving God. All those things that we know about Jesus should be in our lives if we want to say we're a Christian. We're Christ-like. <clears throat> because if we're Christ-like, then we got to love everybody. Remember, Jesus loved everybody. It didn't matter if you were a horrible, rotten sinner or if you were one of the teachers in the synagogue. It didn't matter. Jesus loved everybody. Can you truly say you love everybody? Mm, some days, right? I know, it's hard, but we have to be trying to be like Jesus. So we are not going to be perfect, but we have to be doing things that are getting us closer and closer to Jesus and closer and closer to living like he was. Now, he was perfect, and we know we can't be, but that doesn't give us an excuse to be like, oh, well, I'm not perfect. I'm never going to be Jesus. I can't do it. No, because he gives us all the tools that we need in his word to help us live like him and yeah we're not going to be perfect we're going to make mistakes but that's okay we can repent for those mistakes but we can't have the attitude of well i'm just not even going to try because i'm never going to be perfect no we have to have the attitude of i'm going to keep trying every day even though i mess up i'm going to repent and i'm going to keep going and i'm going to keep trying every day to get closer and closer and closer to jesus and while we wait there's a few things we can do too and those are actually told to us in the scriptures too. He tells us we need to be reading his word, right? Praying every day, read the Bible every day, witness, tell people about Jesus. Those are things we should be doing while we're waiting on him to come back. <clears throat> that is part of living a holy life and living a Christ-like life. What did he do? He taught people. If we're not teaching other people, then we're not being Christ-like. So all those things are in his word. And if you're reading his word, you're going to find those things out. And you're going to see all the things that Jesus wants us to be doing while we're waiting for him to come back for us. So another scripture in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 to 23. I like these verses. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. Now, if you've been listening, we've talked about that a little bit. That doesn't mean that 24-7, you've got to be praying all the time. No, pray without ceasing means pray continually. Make sure that your mind is always on the things of God. Yeah, you don't walk around and say prayers out loud all day long, but your first instinct when something comes up, when something goes wrong, when anything happens, your first thought should be pray. Let's pray. Let's, add, let's find out what God wants us to do about this. Pray. Be in a mindset of thinking, the first thing I want to do is pray and talk to Jesus every morning. And I want to talk to him every night before I go to bed. But then during the day when things happen, that should be my first response. Not, oh my goodness, what am I going to do now? Pray, 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 pray. You don't have to pray all day long and all night long, but your mind and your heart should be in a continual state where you're like, all things revolve around Jesus. If something goes wrong, your first thought should be, well, let's pray about it because I know Jesus can help us. We can't do it ourselves, but I know Jesus can help us. Or, you know, you run into somebody at the store and they tell you how sick they've been. Your first thought should be, well, let's pray. Let's ask Jesus to heal you. Not, oh, well, you know, uh, that's fine. They're sick. They'll be, they'll be all right. They'll get over it. And you just go on with your day. No, that's an opportunity for you to reach out and be like, well, how about we pray right now? And we'll ask Jesus to help you feel better. You know, so just having Jesus on your mind and continually thinking about the things he can do, using every opportunity you can, keeping your heart and mind on Jesus is what that means. So, and then it says, in everything, in everything, give thanks. So even when, we've talked about this, even when the day is going horribly wrong, still be thankful. Be thankful, 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 thankful in everything everything be thankful and says for this is the will of God 
in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit, despise not prophesying, prove all things, hold fast that which is good. That means hang on to the good stuff. Get rid of the bad. Hang on to the good stuff. Abstain from all appearance of evil. So even if it's something that just looks like it's a little sketchy or it looks like it's probably not godly, stay away from it. Don't even go that direction. If you see something coming up and you're like, mm, I don't know if I should watch that. Well, that's probably God saying, yep, you probably shouldn't. And so listen to that voice that's in there and be like, yeah, that's why I'm feeling that way. I probably shouldn't watch that. There's probably stuff in there I shouldn't see. God, God wouldn't be happy with me if I watched that or if I did that or if I went that place or whatever it is in your situation. Think about that. Abstain from all appearance of evil. So even if it looks like it might be a little bit bad, you need to stay away from it. It says, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit, body, and soul be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, again, the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So yes, we're not going to be perfect, but we want to allow him to be working every day so that we can remain blameless and our body be preserved. If we're allowing Jesus to work in our life and we're trying to do the things that he's asked us to do, then we're going to be ready when he comes back. And we've talked about all these promises. We know for sure he's coming back. We may not know when exactly, but we know it soon based on the scriptures. We know how to be ready. We know Acts 2.38 we know first peter be holy we know those verses so while we're waiting for him to keep that promise and come back for his church his people that have him living inside while we're waiting on that promise we need to read our bible every day pray every day talk to other people about jesus those are things he wants us to do be thankful rejoice evermore that means be happy be thankful about everything i know you're gonna have a bad day but that's okay because the only one who can turn your bad day around is jesus so rather than having a bad day all day and letting it go to the next day and the next no stop pray ask jesus to help you because he's the one that can turn your sadness into joy he can help your situation turn around so you have a happier day. You have things go right in your life rather than go wrong. He's the only one that can help us do that. That's not something we can do on our own. Some things happen and it's because, yeah, we shouldn't have did what we did and we wouldn't have been having a bad day. Yeah, but then there's some things that happen and they just aren't in our control. We have to rely on Jesus and his control that he's got everything in control. So be thankful, be rejoicing, be reading your Bible, praying, witnessing, all those things because we know his promises are true. We know he's going to come back and we want to be ready when he comes. He, does, he loves us. He does not want us to still be on this earth when he destroys the earth by fire. He doesn't want us to still be here. He wants us to be in heaven with him. He wants us to be living with him and not be on this earth when that happens. And we're going to have some lessons coming up about that too. So I'm telling you, stay tuned every Wednesday night for these lessons about Jesus returning and what we need to do in the meantime and how we should be acting and what's going to happen and how. Stay tuned because we're going to cover all that. And he's coming back soon to take us to live in heaven with him for eternity. That means forever, forever and ever and ever and ever. You can't even imagine because there's no end of time. And we're used to a stop and a start of things. Well, there's no stop to eternity. It just keeps going and going and going. And we want to be with Jesus during that time. So remember his promises. Remember he promised in his word he will return so jesus will return and think about that and be happy about that and be rejoicing about that and while you wait make sure you're praying and reading and witnessing to other people and i will see you next time around